still have just a bit under 17 hours left on the core before it upgrades to level 9. So it hasn't been 24 hours yet since I started the upgrade. Since I believe it was 1 day and 14 hours for the core to finish. So there are still a few hours remaining. And in less than 24 hours, I actually got a lot of people attacking me. So it starts all the way down here from... Bionic Man, level 36, and that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 people attacking me in less than 24 hours. And yeah, I guess that makes sense because um, if you remember last night I had uh, just a bit under 64 KB coins, so I guess they all wanted my B coins. And I did end up spending my B-Coins on the Access program, upgrading it to level 5. And I chose the Access program because I wanted to actually do some calculations for some of my other programs to determine which one I should upgrade now and which one I should upgrade later. But the Access program I thought was a good call either way, and there's no real harm in upgrading it now, so I just went with it, I thought it was a safe bet. And uh, I'll try and figure out which one I want to get next. So, since there's so many attacks, I can't really show all of them, but I do want to show a few interesting ones, because they kind of demonstrate some, um, I guess, fun facts, let's call it. So let's start off with uh, level 36, Bionic Man, who came in with stealth and, I guess, no protectors, since he was relying on the Shocker and Ice Wall, apparently. But that's actually not a lot of ice walls or shockers or someone with no protector, which is kind of interesting given he's level 36. And then he also puts on the Wraith and the Portal at the same time for some reason, which is not a good idea to say the least. I'm gonna assume that's a mistake, since um, if you're gonna Portal on, then there's no point also Wraithing it at the same time. Um, the only use case I can see is that if you raise the scanners, then it doesn't give visibility, but even if you do that, it's only worth it if like you're trying to get somewhere further down. So here we actually see that he is trying to get put on the shocker on the scanner, but then it, he doesn't put on the ice wall, and it when it goes down, and the scanner takes back the code gate, and then he just gives up immediately. And um, I mean, yeah, that was pretty bad because uh, now he has just lost the Shocker for free, and his progress got reset, and I would probably quit too if I was in his situation. We also got level 28, Geeky Nerd. A Kraken user, as it turns out. And, um... I guess for some reason, he has no programs. Oh wait, it... Okay, wait, he actually has six worms. That's pretty weird, why would you need six worms? Since I thought the whole purpose of the worm was so that you don't have to carry as many programs, but if you carry six worms, doesn't that kind of defeat the purpose? Because a worm is like three slots, so that's like 18 slots. And I mean, even if he carries one worm, that's like 15 slots that could have went into beam cannons or something. And here he demonstrates why I don't like the battering ram, because his battering ram was level 3. So he needed one extra hit to break the code gate uh, filter, and he just doesn't get it. And now the code gate took all, uh, and now the code gate was antivirus pushed back the uh, other code gate, so he just lost his battering ram, and now there's absolutely nothing he can do against the filter, and all he needed was one more hit. But as a result, he basically just did all that for absolutely nothing, and now he's gonna have to break the Koke the traditional way. And because of that, he's just losing so much time on this one Koke alone. It got, what, reset three times already? Yeah, that, that was the third time. So he lost a minute and a half from this one Koke, all because the battering ram was lost. And he, because he, I guess he overestimated his battering ram strength, since he could have put in a nice wall, but that was definitely not worth it. And to be honest, I'm actually surprised that he's still going, because 
With only 1 minute and 15 seconds left, even if he does make it to the end, it's pretty unlikely he's gonna have time to loot, and uh, he could just save himself the money, or B-coin, by just uh, not going further, I guess, but he's being resilient, so that's nice. And... Oh wait, I take that back, actually he does give up, right here, oh well. We also got Mike2947, level 35, with apparently mass protectors. He has 7 protector level 4s, and that's actually quite a lot, so because of that he has only 12 beam cannons and just 6 shurikens, so I guess he's going to rely entirely on worms, but he also has 3 worms. Um, I hope I'm not missing something again, because I don't, I don't see why you need worms in the first place, and I see even less reasons why you need more than one worm, but yeah, let me know if there's a good reason, because I'm not seeing it. So he, for some reason, got three Krakens, but he's only using two, which is kind of strange. Unless he just decided to compile three, but only use two, is this like a standard thing he does? Because um, that's another seven program slot he could be using on something else if uh, he wasn't going to use the Kraken, so that's a bit strange too. Or he does not notice that I have four net connections since I'm upgrading the core. That could be why. So he does lay down the first protector here, and I mean, in, with so many protectors, yeah, I would definitely try and spam as many protectors as possible, since uh, they would definitely be useful uh, against my network. But it seems like that the level 4 protector just doesn't really hold as well as he wants to, because it just went down on the scanner, and already it's starting to go down on the turret as well. So he had to reapply the protector on the scanner. and. While he was doing that, and uh, applying the, the other protector onto the other scanner, the sc protector on the turret went down. So, he does end up reapplying protectors, because his, he ha while he has a lot of protectors, his protector isn't enough to hold. And that's also partially because of uh, him using the worms, and no real beam cannon or shuriken level. Because the worms by itself doesn't really do that much damage. So, he just runs into the situation where his protector gets overwhelmed over time. And now he has no ice holes remaining, so now he can't even get past this point because it's not gonna be uh, hold up long enough to put on the protector by itself. He's still gonna need a nice wall either way. So let's take a look at some uh, semi successful people. Uh, we have Captain Billy, level 35, who got the core, but only the core. So that's still better than nothing. And he actually didn't use stealth, which is a smart move, I guess since uh, the people using stealth so far haven't really done so well from what I've seen. So let's see how well this goes in the brute force attack. In fact, I think the people who uh, gets me the most right now are people who don't use stealth, which I'm not sure if there's a correlation here or something, but that just seems to be the pattern so far. And uh, he's using the battering ram, a little four on both code days. So he is going to be able to get down to Kobe with one less hit than needed, but it seems like he is still going to have to put down an ice wall here, because um, even though he did get the cold filter down before uh, the Kobe would have gotten taken over by the antivirus, he uh, still didn't want to lose his beam cannon, I guess. And um, he's only carrying three protectors, so he is using the blaster here though, which is definitely a, st a smart move. And that's exactly what I would do as well. Since it really seems like in choke points like these, protectors, or not protector, blaster is definitely the right answer. Well, blaster plus protector to be exact. Since uh, the blaster uh, really helps with the fact that you can only put on two slots onto the scanner. And it also really helps in the fact that uh, the protector will go down uh, if um, the nodes just keep hitting it since uh, the antivirus will, will eventually overwhelm the protector. But with the blaster on it, it's going to eventually... Um, well, it's going to reduce the amount of damage it takes, so it's far less likely for the protector to go down as fast. 
And here, I don't like that he's not using the blaster, in fact, since I think this would actually be a good situation to use the blaster. Um, with only the beam cannon, we can see here that the Guardian has a lot more chances to put, uh, put on the shield on the core, and even gets uh, several more chances to put the shield onto the um, compiler. So he's losing a lot of time here on this one choke point. Although it is a good thing that he put on the protector here, since otherwise he might have just straight up not made it. And uh, he was also forced to use an ice wall there, although I guess it might have been smarter for him to actually just let it die and then take it over again, because we see here that he's only down to one ice wall, which is going to be a huge problem if he wants to actually loot my resources, since uh, he needs at least two. But luckily, my antivirus is strong enough now that even though uh, he has three beam cannons on here, it still managed to take out down the uh, ice wall before he managed to get anything. And this is also a good reason why I decided to put the attack priority onto my storages first, which might seem a bit counterintuitive, since I mean after all, the storage is the most valuable thing, right? Once they get the storage, it's well, game over, in a sense. But since the storage is a lot tankier than the server farm, by forcing them to attack the storage first, I actually get uh, all three nodes hitting the, with the antivirus. Whereas if they were able to attack the server farm first, then it would actually have two nodes, and then they might have actually gotten something. Whereas by forcing them to attack the storage first, they actually ended up getting absolutely nothing. So that's my reasoning, and uh, this is, I guess this doesn't happen too often, so I'm glad it worked out the way it did. And Sky2020 also made it all the way to the core, and uh, he actually did use stealth and kraken at the same time, so... That's slightly disappointing, since um, I'm not too big of a fan of this approach. But then again, I think when people use the Kraken, they seem to have a significantly easier time getting to the core. And uh, so if I want to actually protect my reputation, I'm not too sure. I'm going to have to adjust something, because otherwise the Kraken will make me lose guaranteed reputation. Which I don't actually know if they want, since uh, I don't think everybody is trying to farm reputation at this point, but I am, so... And we have the Kraken here attacking the turret. Um, the Kraken also poses kind of a threat to my one turret though, since uh, the turret is on the path to the core. Uh, one thing I could do is maybe move it out of the path, but I can't really do that without, at the same time, reducing the amount of uh, security node I have on the scanner, so... It's sort of a double-edged sword, I guess. But, um, we see that he actually has a uh, much better luck securing this first choke point. He got the whole thing down in one minute, and he's already onto the uh, second choke point on the scanner. And he actually elects to use shurikens, which not too many people do. Well, actually, a few people do, but not significant amount. I would actually think a lot more people will begin doing this, but it's not as much as I thought. So he does get onto this uh, Guardian relatively easy because of the Shuriken, and he does end up um, taking down my security node, or well, the turret at least. But the problem here is that he runs out of ice walls and protectors, so even though he did get onto here, he can't actually loot anything. So I guess he just decides to um, take down my core instead, since if he was just going for the reputation, he could just leave, but he has one minute left, and he didn't eventually take my core, so that seems to be what he did. So I guess some people that do care about the reputation, and uh, that's why I gotta make it harder for them to get the core too, right? <laughs> so yeah, that's just the state of my network so far. This uh, antivirus working out really well. Um, slightly concerned about the one guy who made it uh, all the way here, although I don't know if there's really much I can do about it at this point, or, well, because, I mean, after all, once the core is done, the network structure is going to change anyways, so I don't think there's really much I can really do anyhow, or need to do, rather. And when I do change the network structure, I might think about how I can protect the core more, since 
I suppose when uh, I get higher in reputation, people will be trying to take the core. And ideally, I want a full defense, since right now it's pretty good. Uh, it does prevent the Kraken hack. It's uh, good as a choke point, but it's still a bit too easy. Maybe I can just move the Guardian to the core. That might be something, but I'll think about it. And uh, yeah, there's nothing much I can do right now because I have to wait for the core to finish. So it's just a quick update. Thank you, and uh, I'll see you next time.